Hello everyone. Welcome to Winter Woman Land. And goodness, this has actually taken me a few days um, to process, to be honest, before I could honestly do this, this live reaction video. Um, so I was like, let me, let me get this done. Let me get this done. But before I get this done, can you guys tell me where you're logging in from? Oh, thank you, Uppity. How are you? Where are you guys logging in from? Do me a favor. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, share. Um, if you're interested in becoming a channel member, I would love to have you over here at Winter Woman Land. Um, I am getting back into the swing of things over here at YouTube. So I'm still trying to figure some things out. Uh, <laughs> so be patient with me. It means a lot that you feel like my mic sounds good. So thank you. Uh, hi, Dekendra. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Oh, Jamal, I appreciate the support. I appreciate the support. Black Swan, did I miss you? Welcome, welcome. Mama V, welcome. Sheila Massey, welcome. Just simply welcome, welcome, welcome. Sheila says she's from Texas. Hampton, Georgia. The Bronx, what's up, Kina? Cupcake Mamas is from Philly. God knows I love me some Philly. Jamal is from Philly. Love it, love it, love it. San Antonio. Oh gosh, my, my uncle lives in Austin. Love San Antonio. Hi, KD. She's from Chicago. Oh, Chicago is one of my favorite places to eat. Y'all, traveling is a guilty pleasure, but I love traveling um, domestically and internationally, but there's some great places in the U.S. Great, great places. Uppity says she's from Seattle, Washington. I've never been. I've never been. Can you believe that? Okay. So before we get started, um, I just want to shout out Queen Sheba. Thank much thanks to her for a doing the interview, but b allowing for me to recap the video on my channel. Um, for those of you that have been recapping either my lives um, or maybe um, IG lives that I've done, someone actually messaged me and said that a blogger by the name of Del Silva, if I'm not mistaken, y'all, if I said that wrong, please forgive me. Um, Del Silva, Del Silva, I don't mean any disrespect. Uh, but if you guys are having issues with copyright or playing some of my content because you want to review it, um, please reach out to me. So maybe you can walk me through on how to remove that. I don't have any issue with you guys resharing um, my latest content. Um, so just let me know. I don't mind removing that because I don't want you guys to get a strike. I don't strike people's channels. Even when they disagree with me, um, I don't strike their channels. So I think that's kind of whack. I think um, striking people's channels because they may have a difference of opinion. To me, I equate it to, you know, coming for bloggers that don't agree with you. People have been very hard on me since season one, but I ain't taking my time out of my day to go argue with them or go off on them. It's just pointless. <laughs> pointless, pointless, pointless. Diamond Diva, welcome from Florida. Welcome, welcome. King speaking with Colton Super Panel. Welcome. All right. So let's see, this video aired uh, last Thursday and we had recorded it um, before, a uh, couple weeks before then. Don't, don't give me the line, uh, but about a couple weeks, give or take, prior to the video drop in. And y'all, this video was not video. This interview was not easy to do. It really wasn't. Um, I don't want people to think that doing something like this is easy. Um, it's hard. It's hard. It's tough. It's um, it's like, you know, going up against a giant. I'm just one person and I'm being honest about my experience. Um, it wasn't all bad. I, do, I didn't even want to give that impression while doing the interview with Queen Sheba. I'm not 
you know, trying to say that it's just all negative. It's not. My preference would be to see some changes uh, because they're necessary for us um, to be in an environment that I feel that we're worthy of. Um, so Yvette, welcome. Welcome, Zira. Um, so that was my reasoning for doing the video to raise awareness. A lot of people did not know some of the ins and outs that go on with reality TV. Um, and I just wanted to bring a light to the things that occur behind closed doors, because a lot of times people suffer in silence. That's just the truth. People suffer in silence. People deal with things in silence. Um, and we're expected just to suck it up and take it because we're getting paid to do it. But, you know, at some point we have to set the standard, raise awareness, demand better so that changes can be made. All that without further ado, y'all, let's get into this interview channel. From home with a simple bookkeeping business has just hit the Wall Street Journal bestseller list. Let me know if you guys can hear the audio. a copy for free. Hi, I'm Bill Von Fumetti, and I've helped over 7,000 regular people, people just like you start six-figure bookkeeping businesses. businesses. I'm, I'm also, also the author, author of the Wall Street, Street Journal best-selling best book, book, Keyboard Rich, Rich how, how anyone can earn six, six figures, figures from home with a... All right, welcome kings and queens. I am Queen Shiva, and welcome to the palace. Y'all, check it out. I... Quick mic check. Can everyone? It's low, but we can hear it. Okay. That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? And I'm not sure if that's because mine is at a certain volume. Let me see if I can turn myself up and see if that'll help. I can hear. Okay, perfect. All right. I am in Washington, D.C., and your girl pulled up for me. I said, you know what? I want to interview the Love and Marriage D.C. crew because they've been gone for about 10 months, and I don't know what the hell is going on, so I pulled up. I called and she answered. So we got Winter Harris in the building. You know, Winter, I almost called you Williams because I wasn't sure what it was or what it is, child, because OWN Network has you as Winter Williams. So welcome, first of all. Welcome, welcome, Thank you welcome. for having me. I'm Absolutely. so excited to be here. I really am. I'm honored, actually. You're one of my faves, so uh -oh. I'm excited. Very honored. All the... I feel pressure now. <laughs> no, don't feel pressure. It's a good pressure. thing. I, I definitely, I respect you greatly. Respect what you do. So honored to be here. Thank you. Look, just so that we're straight. Is it Winter Harris or is it Winter Williams? It is Winter Harris. And it's been Winter Harris since I married. <laughs> it never changed. Okay, so why is OWN Network branding you as Williams? That's how I initially came to the show, but once the divorce was finalized, I request for my name to be changed back to Winter Harris. You requested several you know, times, just like we went in a corporation. <laughs> Absolutely. And your name still has not been changed. No, no. Oh, the shade of it all. Okay, <laughs> I guess they said we don't get a thing. <laughs> you gonna be William. Right. Your it, names matter. Listen. Names matter, and for me, that's huge because it's a direct like departure from what was let's pause a bit so the whole name change um no it's a live reaction video so the whole name change thing i did request that my name be changed um here's actually some real information for you guys for those of you who don't realize um i came in on the show as winter williams that was actually kevin's last name um however real talk Legally, my name has always been Harris. It was never even changed when I was married to Kevin. Um, and that's important to note because it wasn't like I was asking um, just to go back because we had divorced. Legally, my name was Winter Harris. And real talk, y'all, when I married that man, and I say it was an omen, um, <laughs> I call it an omen, uh, when we got married and I went to change my name, we went through the courts twice and both times my name change application was denied. 
we could never get a direct answer as to why they would not approve my name change. Child, the state of Virginia took my good money and was like, no, deny, we're not changing it. And it was just so weird. But I'm so grateful I didn't have to change it because, baby, we did not last a year. So it wasn't worth being changed no way because it, it wouldn't have stayed regardless. <laughs> But that is the real deal. So when I came into the show, I actually asked that my name be changed. And I have been asking since season one. I do have emails requesting that they change my name to Harris um, on my profile, at, on the website, and um, as we're filming the show. So if you guys actually go back and watch um, the beginning of season two, you see them kind of do this name change thing in the in the episode and they kick Williams out and they put my name back to Harris. Um, but yep, that's the real tea behind that. So moving onward to what I am. That's when you say names matter because it reminds me of another reality television star. Granted the divorce, I don't want any association with who I was. Everything that I've gained since and accomplished since mm. is attached to what my name is now. So were you Risa Tisa before we knew Risa Tisa? Absolutely. Let me tell you, baby, <laughs> for real. baby got all the shine Lisa. that I probably should have got. But see, this is this is the downside to reality mm. TV. This is the downside because we see how powerful her story was. And she told the truth. She didn't Absolute water truth. it down. She mm -hmm. didn't say, you know, I was perfect in all thine ways, right? She was like, no, I can be honest and say I miss red flags. I did the same my first season. And but she said red flags are right there from the onset. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely there were some red flags from the onset. But when you're in it, when things are in motion, when you feel like you're making the right decision, and I personally had a religious bend to mine, so we could just spray some prayer and prophecy on it, and that made it even more better, right? But at the end of the day, um, I look at her story, and I'm like, wow, we had a golden opportunity to capitalize off of the same thing, yet I was villainized for my experience. Who villainized you? Keep it real. I believe, honestly, I mean, production, editing, that was their choice to paint it as I, okay, so let's, let's back up a bit. Okay. This is important. Okay. And I say that was their choice because they knew I was no longer a relationship coach. And eliminated my ability to explain that I was no longer a relationship coach. They wanted me to roll with that title because it tied into me being a relationship coach, yet I can't choose a person in a, in a relationship. So who set that up? Carlos King? Whoever makes the decisions on the call a name. <laughs> Whoever makes the decisions. Carlos has always said, you guys blame me for everything. I don't make the decisions. So if it's not him, it's whoever he puts in charge, right? It's production. Well, it's it signs off. What, what, it can't, can't leave the door. It can't go out the door without your final approval. So would it be safe that the final approval would come from Carlos King? I would say it came from him, and okay. he okayed me being painted as okay. I'm a relationship coach that can't choose a relationship. Therefore, I'm a villain because, again, this is all building blocks, right? She's a relationship coach who can't choose, who has all of these bad experiences. Therefore, I am jealous of my castmates' healthy marriages. So he set you up. Ciao. From the onset. <laughs> Carlos King said. So let's just talk about this. This is important. So I don't think you guys realize that we have storyboards when we are, when they are creating our shows. And they go into a room they create storyboards around everyone's character. And I believe during those meetings, they decide who is, um, they decide who is going to be the villain, who's not going to be the villain. All those things are discussed. That's my belief. Um, and so when that is, 
Oh, I'm sure. Um, but the reality is that they make decisions. I actually explained at Monique and Chris's di dinner, the vegan dinner, that I wasn't a relationship coach and I wanted the opportunity to explain that I was no longer a relationship coach. I don't want to be identified as a relationship coach because honestly, y'all, at the time, I was a licensed minister. Like I was on revival tours. I was teaching. I was doing master classes. Um, okay, I will do that queuing. Thank you so much. Um, that was what I was doing, but I don't think they wanted to roll with that. That wasn't as um, riveting for the story of when it came to me being the villain uh, and, you know, being the relationship coach. That just made more sense for the story. So, anywho, and that's thank you, QA. I'll mute myself while the video is playing. So, yeah, that I wasn't allowed to clarify that, but I understand why that was not allowed. And, Stevie, that's a great question. Um, I'm not throwing shade at Carlos. This is the reality of what took place while I was there as a cast member of Love and Marriage DC. I think sometimes people want to tear down your experience because it shines a light on where there may have been some shortcomings and some and some downfalls and some ways that things could have been done better but the only way the only way to address things is to hear where there may have been issues this is my truth this is my experience no one can take that away from me there is not one castmate that could stand 10 toes down and tell me that what I experienced season one um, didn't happen. Um, they can't tell me that I wasn't verbally abused. They can't tell me that I wasn't emotionally abused. They can't tell me that there wasn't um, mental anguish and repercussions for what I experienced. And the reality, y'all, is that there were three people on set as eyewitnesses who saw what I experienced. Um, and so when you have three people um, that were on set and who experienced and saw, and they too were impacted by what they saw, you don't, you don't, you don't have the right and you don't have, um, you just don't have the right to tell us what we didn't experience and witness. Um, and I'm thankful because honestly, we had a closed set, but they were allowed um, they were allowed to be present. And I believe God allowed that presence to protect me because he saw ahead. Um, he saw ahead, he saw this happening and he knew that this day would come. And so people can say, oh, she's lying. Oh, she's making it up. Oh, BS. Um, there's three other people that were present. Um, and in fact, there is documentation that I experienced what I experienced. Um, so this is not about attacking um, and defaming. Um, it's just, it's the truth. And I don't know how else to, to relay it. Um, all that to say, yeah, it was very disturbing. So I just want to clarify that this has nothing to do with trying to um, attack, but everything about expressing my truth. That is just what it is. It's just what it is. So let's keep moving. I want to get through this with you guys and I'll take questions at the end. Let me mute myself. You, uh, so basically dequalify you dequalify your credentials de what because all all the things because if like you said if i'm a relationship coach how come i can't pick a decent man for myself mm -hmm. which would be relevant to the audience absolutely right? um damn and you create a person or perception at this point so you're creating my reality my reality is no longer my own that's some good stuff <laughs> it's that's the truth good stuff when did it hit you that you were being set up to fail. When we think about black excellence, you, you what did you, first of all, let me back up before the setup. Mm -hmm. What did you think you were walking into? I'm gonna be 
brutally honest. Okay. I don't know that I've ever said this before. But when Monique came to me about the opportunity. Can we say Monique who? Monique Samuels. Okay. Okay. So when she came to me about the opportunity, she said, hey, I have an opportunity to shoot this new reality TV show. It's centered around families, black excellence. I came from toxicity. This show is not going to be about that. Um, I know you and your husband, which is now my ex-husband, but I know you and your husband. Y'all are doing some great things. Um, you guys want to come on. We talked about it. We did the first two initial interviews. This may be something the audience doesn't know. My ex-husband and I did two initial casting interviews. We were actually pushed through to be one of the couples, either okay. friends of the show or either the fourth couple on the show. Everything went to hell for me personally. I called Monique back and I said, hey, I'm dealing with some things personally. Pull us out of the running. Wish you guys the best of luck. Fast forward, this was about three or four months later, I actually called her to explain what had happened and that I had subsequently made a decision to file for divorce. All that to say, we get to January of 2022, Melody Holt, or Melody Cherie, Melody Holt but then. Melody Holt at the time, okay, okay. was actually scheduled to do Monique's podcast to connect the shows as sister shows. What? Hold on. Y'all hear that? Yes. Keep going. She was actually supposed to be there. Mel got sick. Monique did not want to cancel the scene because they had paid for everything already. Okay. She called me. She said, hey, you're the only other person I know that's really in women's empowerment. You live right up the road. Can you be here? It's going to be filmed. But if you're okay with that, I would love for you to do it. I said, no problem. Showed up, got mic'd. I'm there to do a job and leave. I'm a one and done. I'm not on the show. I'm not trying to be on the show. I'm just trying to help my, mm -hmm. help my friends <laughs> mm -hmm. and take my behind home. Mm -hmm. The EP and one of the execs from Kingdom Rain were on set that night. Who, what exec from Kingdom Rain? It would have been Angela at the time. Okay. She's no longer with Kingdom no, Rain. No, she's not. She got the hell out of there, but go ahead. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> She's sorry. no longer with them. But but Angela and our mm -hmm. EP was on set. They asked me if I would film again. I said, sure. That would have been the Tyler's anniversary party. I filmed. Little did I know they had asked Carlos to fly in to see me on screen, oh, wow. on camera. So they said, Winter, we need you to come to the back. Something is wrong with your mic. I left scene. Went to production room to get my mic fixed. Carlos King was there. Introduced himself and he says, hey, we really like what we have seen. Are you interested? Because we would like to add you to be a part of the show. And I said, sure. Like, mm -hmm. let me think about it. But how long do I have to decide? Wasn't very much longer. Probably a few days I thought about it. I said, sure, I'll be a part of the show. I talked to Monique and she said, Winter, this is a great opportunity for you to share your testimony. Everything you've gone through with your issues with Kevin. You know, do you feel like he will film? And I was like, I don't know. They can reach out to him. I have not spoken to him. I personally don't want to film with him. But if y'all can figure out a way yeah. around it, I'm willing to be transparent. She was like, this is awesome. This is going to do this. Is, this is going to help so many people. Mm -hmm. um, this will be huge for your brand. I know you love encouraging women. That was how it was sold to me. Damn. Bait and switch. Because Monique ate you alive. Yes, she did. I'm sorry. There's so many things going through my head. Let's back up a little bit. Yeah. Because, Winter, this is really good. Th these are things we don't know. No. And I just want to pause on it so everybody can catch up that's tuned in. Yes. And I am so glad that you are here today because how would we know if we don't really sit down and talk to y'all? So, number one, thank you for giving me oh. a portion of your time today. Oh, I appreciate it. And, and I just want to talk through it. I, Angela. Yes. When Angela was there, yes, that's when you had the fan favor. Correct. That is so important. Let me let me tell you where I'm going with this. It's necessary to have women at the table. Absolutely. They bring a good balance mm -hmm. to how women are depicted, how women are being betrayed, and what walks out the door. Mm -hmm. Now that she's gone, you didn't say this. This is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. No wonder why things in my opinion, watching this unfold on both Love and Marriage DC and Love and Marriage Huntsville, no wonder why shit just seems completely deconstructed. Mm. Because I've always wondered, where are the women? Right. 
who's going to help these women? Who's calling time out? I, I pre, I'm not knocking a man and what he can do. Right. But baby, you need some females at the table. Yes. So Angela was there. Correct. They surprised you with Carlos King. Yes. Monique pumped it up. Absolutely. Carlos says, I love you. Are mm -hmm. you interested in taking the job? Yes. What he put on it as far as money? What are we talking about? Oh. What do you mean? Was it juicy? Juicy offering? Yes. I don't know what people think we get paid. We do not get Bravo money. What I can say, because I am contractually bound not to give numbers, what I can say is that it was not over 2,500 an episode. We finna go to break because I know you lie. <laughs> I, I know you lie. That I know for sure. Are that you... I can I can say with with full confidence. We're gonna pause here because um I told the truth in this. I just literally contractually cannot give numbers. Um, but I do have a <laughs> yeah, um, I, I, I can't say exact numbers, but I do have a text from Monique um, that can, that would back up what I'm saying. Um, I don't think people understand that, yes, first season, you shouldn't expect a lot. Um, but what a lot of us have learned is that some of our sister shows do get better pay now some people will say it's because of ratings um it's because of ratings and that's why but i don't think that that should matter you know what i mean like i think that there should be pay equity in a sense better pay equity and that's where i do agree with um with sheba because y'all um yeah it's not um it's not an easy job and we give up to put in perspective y'all let's say for instance you guys just watched the tyler's anniversary party y'all that was a that was a that was a a nine eight or nine hours on set eight or nine hours on set and let me tell you they scrambled to make that look like it was enjoyable. I was asleep. I got in trouble for falling asleep on set at, at Jamie's retirement party. Um, it wasn't, you know, wasn't all as exciting as it looked. A lot of us were exhausted. We were tired. Um, I'm trying to think, was there a DJ? Dang, I wish somebody from... Um, <laughs> I I'm I can't remember if there was a, for some reason I feel like there wasn't a DJ or something. I mean they had to go find a speaker. All that to say, y'all, that was a long day. So when you talk about the time that it takes for us to film, um, the the cost to participate just ends up not being really worth it. And then, for instance, I think I say in here I use it as a marketing budget since we don't really um get the compensation but ashley's been very vocal about this um i can now say um sherelle's been very vocal about this i can now say y'all i and i'll have to go look and see if they even posted it on their youtube page as a um as like a special release but y'all i recorded a whole music video a whole music video a high quality high level music video that we filmed that was not shown and when you're coming out of your pocket for stuff because all these scenes that y'all see us do all of these events y'all remember my romancipation that was out of my pocket anything that cost was out of my pocket um and i want to say um for the cash trip um they paid for the chef, but we have to come out our pockets for these events, guys. We're not getting a budget for these events. 
So, and they like for them to look a certain way because you want these events to look, you know, high quality on camera. But a lot of times if y'all see some of the events not look as flashy or um, high level, it's because people are coming out of their own pockets to do it. Um, so we don't get a budget to cover these events like that. And if there, if there is a budget, budget, we're talking like two and $300, but that's kind of the challenging thing when you talk about some of the pain, but let's keep moving on. I'm a, I'm a skirt. I'm a skirt up just a little bit because I don't want to be on here all night. I hope I don't miss nothing good. I even started to notice some of the hair growing back at the end of the first bottle. This has literally changed my life. Out of our own pocket. So, so when, when you, you see people, people dress and it's probably rented or you see people in sheen, or <laughs> this is why. Wow. Because there's no marketing budget for that. That comes out of the money that you're getting. And that money is not a lot. I'm shocked. It's the truth. I'm shocked. So, I believe you. No, I believe yeah, you. Yeah, so I have to make the distinction when people say, well, why are you complaining? Y'all are making all this money. I'm like, well, who? <laughs> who? Who? Nobody on my cast is. I know for a fact. I have had plenty of conversation with my cast. So it's not because we're getting paid. So then I have to make a decision that is based on on morals and principles at that point. I'm not willing to sell my soul for pennies and that's essentially what is happening because the compensation is simply not wow. there i'm just speechless because let me tell you why carlos is very vocal about his coin and about living in a two million dollar home i think he purchased from safari and erica mena okay he's extremely vocal honey i've never heard him listen he talks about his whatever his coin his coin his coin and he's doing well and he's he said it but to take your people and not set them up to succeed because people play like they're paid. If you want good talent, you pay good talent. Correct. So I'm just completely. Or you find talent that is thirsty enough to be seen hmm. that don't care what they're paid as long as they have screen time. This is the issue I have with, with where I am now and why I've made the decisions that I've made. Because if your only goal is to be seen and you don't care how much you're compensated in order to display or show certain things, you're a dangerous person to me. That and there's greed at the top. Absolutely. Because there should be enough for everybody. Even, should be. Come on, 2,500 per episode. You can do better than that. After one, the maybe, maybe not the first season. Second season, because I remember Carlos talking about how he or somebody, he did an interview with Nini where they okay. talked about how they coached. I don't know if it was him or how it, everybody got coached up to ask for more. Did y'all ever ask for more? <sighs> yes, actually. However, let's dive a little bit into why people are so confused with our seasons. Okay. And why we have a season one or season one, a a season one B like people what ask, like, that? what does that mean? Exactly. Mm -hmm. We have asked the same thing because to us, we, we film, you know, 10 to 12 episodes in a season, you add a reunion, that's maybe two or three parts. You're doing anywhere between 12 and 15 episodes, okay. right? We consider that a season though. So it should be season one, season two, season three. Yeah. This is similar to Bravo. Correct. Gotcha. This, these are my thoughts. I just want to put that out there. My You can opinion. say what you want because, Carlos, you be saying what you want. But go ahead. We talking. <laughs> so my opinion mm -hmm. is that if you call it season 1A, season 1B, when we think that we're starting a new season, you can say, no, 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 no. it's still season 1B because then you don't have to renegotiate our contracts. That's what I think. You're talking to a woman that has an MBA and two years of doctoral school with a concentration in business administration and leadership. Okay. My business sense tells me that is why that is done. Not mm. for any other reason other than if I, if I can keep calling it still season one, you can't renegotiate your contract because a new season would automatically indicate that we can renegotiate. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not what we're getting. And yes, there have been a lot of conversations about that. Wow. To no avail. To no avail. 
I mean, the same the same lack of discussion we got as to why we were shelled for 10 months. Yeah, I want to talk about that because I feel like you guys got off to a great start. It's, you came out the blocks mm -hmm. really strong, and I was sold. Yeah. And I watched, and I was ready. And then almost a year, uh -huh. almost a year of nothing. What uh -huh. happened? What happened? Because we didn't hear anything. For almost a year. <laughs> almost, so y'all were waiting We didn't like know we were. any more than the audience knew. There was no communication. There was no email. There was no text. There was no nothing. Notice by pigeon. Nothing. <laughs> like nothing. Okay. Let me let me let me tell you why. Wow. So I okay. That's called abandonment of a job in corporate America because nobody can disappear that long. I could in corporate America. And neither could you. No. That's the way it works. Now I do know Carlos mentioned to Dustin about your cast recently mm -hmm. that uh he's been hearing rumors of some of you that do not want to return Correct. yet he has not received any type of communication by way of a two-week notice okay. or anything like that because he said if that's the intent then the right thing to do is to communicate that yet you all did not receive any communication for almost a year about where your show was going correct when you did receive communication what what was conveyed well, we received communication on our recap. Ashley Silva and I did a recap. Mm -hmm. And he was our guest. And he apologized to us publicly for the lack of communication. And he stated that he he will take the L because as the CEO of Kingdom Reign, it was his responsibility to communicate. And he did not. Mm -hmm. All he could tell us was that it was not him. It was a network decision on when to bring our show back. That's okay. That still was not communicated, though. Correct. Okay. So he did issue a po an apology oh, for that. That was nice. It w was it? <laughs> I mean, and and again, I have nothing personal against Carlos. I know, I know. But at the end of the day, this is business, right? Business would tell us that there is an appropriate, just like he's expecting a two-week notice, which he will receive from me since he Whoa. wants it in right Whoa. There. Okay, we'll come back. <laughs> I mean, if that's what he wants it in writing for me to detail that I am actually one of said cast members that's not returning, I'm not. And if he needs to receive it in writing, he will get it in writing, but I'm not coming back. I'm done with Love and Marriage DC. I mean, this writing is a form of documentation. You can give your notice now if you want to. And Marriage DC, <laughs> if that will suffice, fantastic. But I'm willing to be professional Absolutely. and send a notice and let them know. But I will go on the record and say that Angela's replacement. Angela. Okay, okay, got it. Angela's mm -hmm. replacement mm -hmm. is aware that I'm not returning. So when the season first started, we have production meetings because of Angela's departure, which was abrupt as well. We didn't know until we got the okay. email. Um and I, I thought Angela was great. No, no issues whatsoever, but we didn't know. We got the email. She let us know she was leaving. So we learned of her replacement when this new season started. And you let that person know. Absolutely. And so when we did our one-on-one with her and another um, person that was implemented as well, I told them, I said, I'm not returning. Just so you guys know, this season, I'm going to let it play out, but this is it for me. All right, so I'm going to address this right here. So what they have against us is that we cannot, we have like a, um, there are things that are put in your contract, like basically that put you on ice before moving on to other things. Um, in addition to that, uh, my attorney and I reviewed my contract. There is nothing in there that says I have to give a notice. There actually is writing, legal writing in there that says I can quit at any time. I, I can quit, quit filming. I can quit being a part at any time. What I sign says that they have the right to keep any and all footage they have. And they are allowed to do whatever they want to do with that footage, regardless of whether or not I want to continue being a part of the project. Um, so when everyone talks about, well, have you sent your notice yet? Have you sent your notice yet? That's not required. Our contract does not require that. Essentially, if 
let's say for instance, we were to go back to filming and I said, hey, I don't wanna do this anymore. I could literally not come back to work ever again. And they could carry on. It just means that they get to keep whatever I've given them. And if you haven't signed a contract, you've given them whatever you've given them for free. Um, your contract does content carry on for season from season to season unless you renegotiate. Um, but there's nothing that says I have to give a notice. Uh, but we are employees of Kingdom Reign. That's who our W-2s come from. Um, that's who signs our check. And so I just wanted to clear that up. Um, we cannot sue them or our castmates while, while filming. Um, that's something we signed. Um, no queuing. The season is done. Um, whatever they have is what they have. In fact, I would love for them to run, run some of the footage raw because y'all would be able to, um, get a better understanding why some people are so frustrated at times. Um, and it's unfortunate, but we know that we signed that away. They have a right to do that. Um, what I will say, my contract also requires that I still, uh, promote and, and, you know, talk about the show until the season is done. So when I say I'm counting down, I'm not joking, y'all. I have a contractual obligation. So when people say, well, quit using the hashtag, I've even had a castmate say, quit talking about your former cast members. Like, I can't get low with the ignorance at times because when you're under contract, you have to fulfill legal obligations. Um, and I have to tweet about it. That's in my contract. I have to finish it out. I'm gonna do that and honor my part. But after that, you ain't got to worry about it. I do want to separate myself. But yes, they can use your footage as as they as they please. Let's let's keep it moving. And she was like, like is, is there, there you, know, you know, a reason? A reason? Take, take it back, take to, it back Monique. to Monique. She knew, she knew enough, enough about, about what, what her and Chris, Chris had going, had going on, on that that, that, that was, was the time, time to renegotiate, renegotiate her contract. Uh, she was so not going to give that intimate of a look into her personal life without being properly compensated for her, you know, comp compensated for, excuse mm -hmm. me. So I commend her for that. She said she was willing to negotiate and receive no further communication. I don't know if anyone else was paying attention. All that signaled to me was that Every last one of us was easily replaceable. Wow. And we could easily be discarded at any time. Wow. And one of the pieces of advice that her and Chris gave me in Ashley Darby's house, no less. Okay. Mm -hmm. I talked to them. That's when I learned that they weren't coming back. So people love to ask, like, did y'all know? Like, yes, I knew. It was not my place to speak their piece. Right, right. But they both said to me, listen here. Pay very close attention. Trust no one. And when you decide to leave, you leave on your own accord. And make sure you do it in a way that no one can touch it. Duly noted. That's wonderful. That's Black excellence. Absolutely. In my opinion. Absolutely. So seeing how that experience played out, and of course, mm -hmm. They didn't care that she was gone. They felt like they had a core in place that could carry on. What I will say is that we have not been the same since they have exited. I do feel like the show could have carried on with, without her, but it also appeared to me that there was a lack of interest when she departed, which is okay. which fuels kind of like, eh, you know, the lack of communication. Did y'all care all that much? I don't know that it was high on the priority list. I see. Okay. Can, can we clarify? Sure. When you say a lack of interest, are you talking about fan base? Or are you speaking directly to production? No, I, I really believe that production and maybe the network, like this was there. Um, and I can repeat this. Monique has publicly stated that she felt like bait. But this was their main draw. This was the main attraction. 
and now your main attraction is gone. The rest of us are fairly unknown on a national platform. Yeah, and she left <laughs> because she said publicly because of contractual and, and what was placed on a table by way of an offer. Mm -hmm. So let's, I want to back up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Angela's replacement have heard you verbally state, I have no intention. My Correct. intent is to not return. Absolutely. Would it be safe to say there's a huge possibility that that information was translated and or shared with Carlos Key? I believe that Carlos knows everything, okay, whether he, he admits to it or not. Girl, he is giving y'all a run for y'all's money publicly. He said he ain't heard nothing. He don't know nothing. I don't know. No Listen. way. Okay. No way. Okay. I don't believe that at all. I believe there was a definite call made as soon as okay. I shared that information. My cast may not be fully aware. I don't talk to all of them That's like okay. that, but I am positive that there was a message relayed to the powers that be that my intention was not to return. Okay. And so to me, I don't feel that I'm valued. Okay. That's my truth. I feel like I'm easily replaceable. And when you will go so far as to maintain a name that I have expressed over and over again mm -hmm. that I want no parts of and I want for you to change, <laughs> you don't care. You don't care. So that's like, why would I stay where I'm tolerated and not celebrated. appreciated and celebrated? celebrated? That makes no sense. Yeah. I wouldn't do that in the in the professional or corporate world. I'm certainly not going to do it with something that I consider a hobby yeah. because you don't pay enough for it to be. <laughs> the shade. Where's my sunglasses? Oh, I left them in my purse. The shade say, has it all. Like, this is not my full time job. This Listen, is not what keeps a roof over my funny. head. That was funny as hell. <laughs> a hobby. Listen, it's a hobby. Well, he treated it like a hobby. I mean, when you lose communication for almost a year, but let me. What's your? Why are you really leaving? Is there, I mean, is there like a reason that you have not shared or? Oh, if you're a woman over 40 and you want to lose belly fat, stop doing endless workouts. When I tell you what I have experienced, I won't even take it back too long. Of course, we know that season one was tumultuous for me. That mm -hmm. is not a secret if anybody watched yeah. season one. Yeah. That reunion was brutal. Yeah, I, yeah, I wanted to fight. Everybody did. I wanted to fight. Everybody did. Mm -hmm. I'm, I've never recanted and I, it makes me emotional. So I, I am going to be. <sighs> Take your time. I don't like to, I don't, I don't want to be a crybaby because that's. <laughs> it's Okay. Um, so I remember film filming that reunion. I was sitting in my chair, of course, you guys know, and I was sitting essentially in the same chair. I was sitting in that reunion. So this is like, um, of course we know the fellas, the husbands were going in. The only person who defended me was Chris. Chris you guys saw that. that. Um, mm -hmm. the craziest thing. I was frozen. People always commend how I just sat there and took it. But I honestly mentally checked out of that moment. That is probably one of the most toxic verbal situations I've ever been in in my life. Yeah. I don't come from an abusive family. My dad was present. He treated us like queens and princesses growing up. So I was not used to men yelling and being that, um, in my opinion, aggressive. It was not stopped. By who? It wasn't stopped by Carlos. It wasn't stopped by production. It wasn't stopped by network. Let's be clear. Okay. Network was present and on site. I met every last one of them. Okay. Um, Similar to Martel Hope going off on set. I heard he put his hands on somebody, but go ahead. So it wasn't stopped. It wasn't stopped. I remember. And at first I thought it was crazy. I'm not even kidding. I remember hearing one of the producers on set as the men are yelling and calling me all sorts of whatevers. There's another man on set. He's a producer yelling, get her, get her, get her, get her. And I was like, 
this is what? I'm so I, I as God is my witness I am not kidding are you serious I believe I I promise you I feel like I mentally checked out to not crack or cry or it was the weirdest thing it was the weirdest thing I thought I was losing my mind I'm so serious but that is what I heard and I thought I had made it up Oh goodness. My hair, my makeup, my stylist at the time could all see what was happening. So we had like a little break in mm -hmm. between. Mm -hmm. um, and this is the first time I had ever worked with my makeup artist actually. Um, you need a moment? No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> um, she leaned down and like touch up my makeup and she said, are you okay? She said, I am, I am angry. She said, Winter, this is verbal abuse. Are you okay? I was like, I'm good. Oh, take your time. And we don't have to talk about it because I don't want you to have to go through that. Yeah. Oh, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Oh, I'm about to cry. No. <laughs> I'm so sorry that happened to you. Y'all, I'm going to pause it because this is, um, this is still very, um, difficult for me to watch. So, um, uh, well, uh, yeah, watching this part is, um, it's still very hard for me because, um, I want to hug myself. I want to hug myself. I want to, um, I want to reassure, reassure myself and forgive myself for not standing up for me at the time. And I understand that, um, I didn't deserve that. I didn't deserve that for the sake of reality TV. I didn't deserve that because I was somebody's mom, I was somebody's daughter, I was somebody's sister, I was somebody's friend. It didn't deserve that. And the crazy thing about it is there were equally, if not worse things said to me. And people love to um, point out that I was coming for their marriages. all that happened when people were coming for me and I'm not excusing what I said in response but um the reality is I didn't deserve that I didn't deserve to be um berated and talked to as if I was less than and um what they allowed to happen that day is inexcusable. And what I will say is thank you to Ashley. This is not because I'm kissing her butt. But despite my interview coming out, she watched it, y'all. And I'm sure it was difficult for her to watch how her actions impacted me. But she still FaceTimed me after this interview dropped. And she checked on me. It apologized for what I experienced. I have not gotten that from anyone else. Not one person outside of her has had the integrity to at least say, I did not know that you experienced or that impacted you like that. But she actually did that. And I'm sure she did not like watching her watching it, knowing that it impacted me like that. But she did call me. Um, and I just want to say that because you don't always understand how what you say can impact another person. But what I will say is that not one person on that stage outside of Chris stopped 
or said, you know what, y'all, that's enough. That's enough. And the fact that it was allowed to continue is ridiculous. It is disgusting. It is unacceptable. And no one should have to sit through that for reality TV. And that's all I have to say. I am going to fast forward this part just a little bit so I can get myself together. But I do want to speak to that. And I do want to say that um, it's sad when people can't even step outside of reality TV and say, you know what? I know we throw shade, but I was wrong. I wasn't right for that. You didn't deserve that. I had no idea um, that you endured that or what you experienced. My therapist said that I was experiencing PTSD. I had nightmares. I could not sleep. Um, it was a lot happening. I'll just say that it was a lot happening. Um, I'm thankful for my friends and my family who supported me, who loved on me, who covered me in prayer, um, who flew me out to get away from the foolishness. Y'all, I was going through a toxic divorce. Let me explain how much people prefer drama over protection. I was in a situation where y'all don't even understand because they cut it out for entertainment. And I'm telling y'all the God honest truth. I was in a situation where I was being stalked by the person I was divorcing. I was in the process of getting a protection order, which is why I refused to film with him. And for the sake of drama, he was asked to attend our cash trip. And I would have been ambushed by him attending because they didn't tell me he would be there that day if Monique didn't pause and text me and then call me to let me know that he would be on set. And I told them, I refuse to be on that set if y'all don't have security. I don't trust him. He's crazy. And it's unfortunate that you guys didn't get the totality of my story to know what I was dealing with at the time. But I was not playing. From what I understand, Chris paid for the security out of his own pocket. Chris paid for the security out of his own pocket to respect what I said. And if you guys go back and watch that scene, he literally makes a beeline for me as soon as he gets there. And Chris gets up and along with security and says, no, you cannot go near her. He continues to try to get by me over and over again. Y'all, all it takes is one instant, instance for something to go wrong and something to happen. Yet we play around with people's lives and this is not a game. I, do, I did not trust him. I did not want to be around him. I was concerned for my safety and that was, that was no, dro no joke. So to fast forward and experience this, for reunion, I will be honest. Um, I don't. I struggle with why it was why I would even come back. Um, and I really thought I would have the opportunity to right the wrong of season one. But y'all, you learn that you're never in control of these situations and it's just better to cut your losses sometimes. So I will own returning. Um, my edit is much better than it was season one, but now I'm fighting the fake edit of me being against joy and bullying joy. And I never did that once. I never bullied joy. I never disliked joy, but that's what it looks like. It's us, me and the Silvas 
against Joy, Clifton, and the Tylers. And that's just not true. Moving on where y'all let me put myself on mute and get myself together. And we'll continue and wrap up this interview, child. I remember leaving my hairstylist who actually is Ashley Darby's hairstylist. Mm -hmm. He was so, I mean, he was cussing mad. He said, Winter, he said, I've been to a lot of reunions. He said, that was insane. He said, that is the worst reunion I have ever witnessed. And trust me, I've seen some stuff because reunions can get bad. Mm -hmm. He said, are you okay? That I don't, I, I couldn't even process, you know, like, <laughs> like what just happened. And all you got was thank you for coming. That's all I got was sent home. Everyone else stayed, had the rest of their happy reunion, did the toast. They have no clue. Oh, I forgot. Let me explain. Can I explain? Sure. Because, because winter was not, uh, because you forewent the opportunity based on personal reasons um, at the introduction of the season. Yeah. She pulled out as a couple of the show or main yeah. couple of the show right correct when she called Monique but because of that she was not seated with the cast the entire time on the reunion that's what she means by when she said she left correct. and everybody else remained on stage correct. would that be accurate that's correct okay I'm glad you said that yes mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so I got sent home I left went back to my hotel mm -hmm. um everyone on my team was traumatized that is the only way I can express um what that was my stylist who was actually the youngest on my team she just kept i just remember her sitting in a corner and i'm like you know what's going on she was like i just she was like i i just i don't know like i i had no i like she everyone was so stunned yeah by that um i i literally went to bed that night and just i called my mom my mom called my best friend who wasn't allowed on set, but she flew with us. Mm -hmm. uh, my mom called her and my mom was like, do I need to fly out there? And she was like, I'll stay with her tonight. I'll make, we'll make sure she gets back. And she was like, well, please just, you know, let me know. I'll, you know, I'll hop a flight if I need to. Like, she doesn't sound like herself, like what happened. And my friend was like, well, I didn't get to go on set, but everyone from set that went is like, they're distraught. Like, she took a real brutal wow. hit. So I talked to my mom a bit and she was like, my mom was angry. Like I'm her baby, yeah, you know, like course. our mama bear, like, what are you going to do? And I was like, well, I know one person I can call that has a direct connect to network because that was just unacceptable. So the following day, um, I got ready to head, head to the airport. I made a call. Mm -hmm. They're fixed because they knew it was bad. So I, I try to explain to people what they did was flip the reunion. So the way it's aired is not the way it happened. Okay. When you say flip. So the part that airs first mm -hmm. actually happened last. Okay. And they did that because it made it seem like I was apologetic and in the wrong. Oh. How to look small and sexy. These are my hidden secret to feeling. So instead of having some type of a, what's the word I'm looking for in English? Uh, rec not reconciliation, but where you address something. Correct. Um, oh, I, my brain went blank. Let's just manipulate the footage <laughs> so that this chick, we place her in a position of what were you apologizing for that they took it and put it at the end to make it seem like you were bowing down to these men. Correct. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I attacked their marriages. I was uh, this single okay. miserable relationship coach who couldn't okay. find her own relationship. And my response was attacking them because gotcha. I was so unhappy. Okay. So we can't have it look like I'm the victim mm -mm. because that's what it would have looked like. If you had to air the footage the way it happened, it was, there was already a visceral reaction to what was shown. This is where people are kind of confused about, well, well, if she's the villain, how does she get, you know, to be the fan favorite? That reunion did it. Mm. People were already 
disgusted by what they witness not knowing that they didn't witness that everything half. okay got it but it was cut out to protect the men sounds like oh absolutely okay. because if you air it the way it is actually happening your your whole audience is asking for them to be removed from the show would it be safe to say do you feel like any other woman on the cast had some challenging moments with the men in your opinion or do you feel like it was specific to you I can't I really don't know I I can I can't speak for them um I know one couple in particular on my show everyone was questioned whether or not she was going through a situation that was abusive mm -hmm, or not mm -hmm. I can't speak for her she says she wasn't we'll go with what she says um so I don't know I do know from my experience I experienced verbal abuse and unfortunately the message was sent to me loud and clear we're going to protect it and make sure it doesn't come across that way. Gotcha. I I want to go back to something you said. Sure. Another cast member was asked. I think it's wrong to ask a woman on camera. I, I think I know what you're talking about. Uh -huh. Are you being abused? Cool. What's she supposed to say? Yes. Yeah. I think that was very uh, irresponsible when we, when we, whether she's not being abused, whether a woman is being abused or not, I think it's very irresponsible yeah. to put her on display or anyone on display, yeah. a child, a woman, a man, and ask them yeah. in front of <laughs> a nation, are you being abused? Because I think if you really care, that's something that you would probably address a little bit differently. Oh, and yeah. if you don't have the skill set to be able to do so, then you bring in the right people. Absolutely. You find the budget, you yeah. bring in the right people, and you address it the right way. Yeah. So that everybody remains safe in that situation. So I know exactly what you're talking yes. about. And I was like, I was yelling at the television. <laughs> Why would you ask her that? In front nobody's going to be. Yeah. I've never known a yeah. woman who is actually in that situation ever yeah. be honest, especially not in front of her abuser. That's just yeah. common sense. Or vice versa, because men get abused too. Absolutely. You know, a lot of men are talking. But I think a lot of black women are not or have not been conditioned to come to the table with a money mindset and say, this yeah. is what I need to happen in order for me to sign that paper. Yeah. And I give you permission to do that moving forward. Yeah. And it's okay because if they can't give it to you, that's not your door. Because yeah. the door that's for you is going to easily open. And that's they're right. going to be willing to pay you exactly what it is that you deserve. And you deserve to be paid. Yeah. Don't ever that. forget that. Okay. Yes, ma'am. All right. Girl, if you call me ma'am, <laughs> Leslie, why is she doing me it's, like it's that, y'all? It's the southerner of me. Yes. It's like, Listen, yes. now, hold on now. It is. No, I appreciate it. But yeah. I, I really want to pour that into you because you are so beautiful. You articulate well. You show up on screen well. And as I'm thinking through business and the product of yeah. it all, it's almost like, wait a minute, I don't ever want to put myself in this position as a production company right. where I have to depend on you. So I'm going to villainize you even more. So you're not a favorite. Yeah. This is what I'm thinking. This is my thoughts as I'm peeling this thing back. And this is why I won't return. Mm -hmm. I don't think I, I didn't can. watch this season. Go you, ahead. I don't highly suggest it. If you <laughs> Was it that bad? Not for me. I feel like they made good on their word. Which was right in with that. Uh, I can't remember his last name. He's married to Arena. Tyler. Um. Okay. Mm. I feel like he's been on you. No, I have not watched this season, and uh -huh. it's probably have gotten better between the two of you. It hasn't. But I've never really understood men uh -huh. that... I don't like men on reality television so much with, with the women, mm -hmm. not as a constant presence. Absolutely. I think it's a bit, mm, most men would rather not. They would rather, they'll do a scene or two, mm -hmm. but to just be sitting there eating dinner with y'all and doing everything y'all do, most would rather not. They don't want to be in a room. Yeah. Most so it took me a minute, y'all. And Faith, I don't mean to be uh, sniffing. I had to get myself together. Um, so I'm going to scoot to the end. I will say, please go to Queen Sheba's page and watch the interview in its entirety if you haven't seen it already. Um, this is the one part of the interview because it was taken out of context by my cast 
and subsequently used to try to deter or deflect from the message that I'm trying to communicate in this video. And I wish I had just never addressed the whole Sheen comment. And if you notice, I started out going into it and I told Queen Sheba initially that it really didn't even matter because it didn't air. Uh, but it was specifically something shady I said while filming. This um, comment was taken by a castmate of mine um, and amplified as a joke. I, I'm going to call it a joke for his sake. I'm going to want to believe he was not trying to amplify any um, any more cyberbullying. So I'm going to, for his sake, say that it was a joke. Uh, but I don't like the deflection because we're talking about so much meat that was in this interview outside of a Sheen reference and I was not saying anything was wrong with Sheen my comment was while filming and she asked us if anyone had it like that on our cast and I'm like no the only one who was really about their life was Chris and Monique they're no longer with us and then I would say the the next on the list would be the Silvas quick does very well as a DJ everyone else y'all we still very much trying to secure the bag. That's the truth. And so when there's a perception put before the audience that we're all just living these multi-million dollar lifestyles, that's not true. Um, so there was a comment that I made while filming, but they didn't air it. So I was telling Queen Sheba, but it really don't matter. But I said it about this person. And it just, I just wish I had left it out altogether because when you're doing things that are important, you don't want to give the enemy any place, loophole, nothing. Because this conversation is way too important for someone to take it and make it about a Sheen comment. Um, but I just want to clarify that it was not. Um, it just I just wish I had never said it because it just it has nothing to do with the matter at hand. Um, and we were trying to pivot from such a deep conversation into something lighter. But, you know, people in the midst of these conversations, I think you just got to, got to keep the main thing, the main thing. Um, so let me fast forward to the end here. Last five minutes, we're going to rock, rock it out and then I'll take some questions before I um, end the night. Okay. And I think when you understand people, there is grace for people. Do I like everything she says and does? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. But I'm also confident enough within myself to be able to say what I want to say and, and stand up to it. We have very hard conversations. I don't agree with a lot of her assessment at times when it comes to editing, because the okay. reality is that they really can't edit what we don't give them. Okay. But they, what, what if people say that applies to you too? That does apply to me. Okay. Which is why I say, if I had known I was going to be the villain, I would have approached it differently. Gotcha. I just didn't know. So I'm just being myself. I don't know these people can. This is my first time ever on reality TV. I've never auditioned okay. for it. I didn't want to be on reality. I'm thinking that I'm just being winter. Mm -hmm. So if I know, if I knew what I know now, oh, I. So case in point, I'm going to tell you why it applies to me and I can own that. Okay, go ahead. The audience at large, their perception of me is very mixed this season. Okay. Where's the winter from last season? Because winter from last season didn't know what the hell was going on. Winter from this season does. Yes. And because winter knows what is happening, I'm a lot more cautious. Okay. Which means that I am not my full self and I am holding back in a lot of instances because I understand what is happening real time. Gotcha. Let me ask you this. If they put more money on the table, would you come back? No. At all? No. That is that is something I am absolutely emphatic about. Okay. And I've said this publicly recently that aside from not feeling protected, not feeling respected, not feeling valued, I believe I've outgrown this platform. Oh, I love it. I love when people realize it's time to go. It's just time to do something different yeah. and something that lives up to who I am mm. in a lot of ways. And I never understood it. I used to take it as a negative now that I've grown and I've matured through this experience. Um, 
people would say, Winter, you're better than this show. I told you. I just said that, you know. But it took me meeting you in person. Yeah. Um, And I respect the fact that as a queen, mm -hmm. you are giving yourself permission to chunk the deeds. Absolutely. I have another question for you. Yes. Final question. Okay. You guys are, you have a podcast or some type of interview on May 12th. Yes. All of the women. Yes. Jumbled up in one. Yes. I take issue with that. Uh-huh. I do too. Because as black women, you did not receive your own separate segment. And I understand that you're all on the same show. Mm -hmm. But when I look at the different white women that are being displayed from Bravo, I mm -hmm. felt some kind of way about mm -hmm. that as a black woman. Mm -hmm. My question to you is, are you going? I have not signed my document yet. Got it. Um, I'm going to call that a game time decision. Mm. Because of the lack of concern for where things are with our cast, I don't think he understands how bad things are. And I would equate it to a lack of understanding with asking an abused person in front of their abuser mm. whether or not they're being abused. I love it. And with that being said, we can drop the mic on that. Thank you, Winter Harris, Palace. This was one hell of an interview. I got to have you back. The doors yes. are all. And Neil, that concludes um, the interview with Queen Sheba. I want to take a few of your answers, uh, um, not answers, a few of your questions before I wrap this up. Um, I didn't answer Queen Sheba in this interview about whether or not I would be attending the Mother's Day Live podcast. You guys know by now that I am not. Um, I was made aware someone contacted me and let me know that the men would be present. And because of the constant cyberbullying and um, attacks that I've received from a male castmate that was responsible for that um, same bullying um, on, you know, season one of their reunion. Um, and I'm going to be honest, I just don't trust it. I just don't trust it. I don't trust him. I don't trust being around him. And so I didn't know that. They didn't tell us that. Someone contacted me and let me know that they would be present. I'm not attending. Um, and I was already on the fence as it was um, because I personally uh, was not okay with what we were offered um, for compensation because out of that compensation, we would have still had to cover hair, makeup, and wardrobe. And it just wasn't sufficient, y'all, for all the things that we have to pay for to look good for something like that um, on set, on stage, you know, like, so um, my decision was not to attend. So if you have any questions, please drop them in the comment section. I'm gonna take a few. And then I'll let you guys go. It's a great question. Um, the, the Deloach and Jean show. Welcome. Do you think that you being so vocal about this, the season is making you unhorrible for season four? Um... I'm not coming back. So it's not it at this point, it doesn't matter if I'm unhirable. I'm not trying to be hired. I have quit the show and my contract allows me to do so. Um, so it just doesn't matter. At this point, I am continuing to work on building my path and building my platform in a different way. Um this is just not the lane for me. It's not the lane for me. Any more questions? Uh, Mark, I see. No, uh, not Mark, sorry. Shilajo, no. Uh, 
I'm well, Mark. Thank you for tuning in. Diamond, I appreciate that. <laughs> I love you too, Deloach and, and Jean Show. No, uh, I, and I, I think that's a wonderful question. I think it's important that you guys know that I had no intentions of doing any more seasons regardless. My mind was made up. And my sole purpose of doing this season was to um, right the wrong that I feel like was done to my my image season one. Um, there was a lot of damage done that I couldn't control. And by the time I figured out that the damage was done, it was too late. <laughs> it was too late. So that's what I mean by, you know coming back, doing what I need to do and moving onward. I wasn't going to come back. And I, I just, once I knew what it was, I realized this was not for me. And now seeing as how I see how things have panned out, I don't even like that they edited me to be against joy because I'm not. So when I say by holding back, um, I'm a very naturally witty person. And so I'll give you guys a great example. Do you guys remember when we did the, um, the say that, I think it's called say that shit. We, we did a bartending class and excuse my language. I don't mean to be, um, use foul language, but that was actually the name of the event. Um, we went to a bartending class and arena opens up in that scene and she says why is winter here i just sit there and took it because what i wanted to say is you know why i'm here we got the same call sheet um but i didn't say anything and in fact you guys you can ask Sherelle Duncan. She sat right next to me while we were filming that scene. And she kept tapping my leg and saying, Winter, you're doing so good. You didn't say not one thing. This is the entire time where while people are taking jabs at me and making smart comments and saying little negative things and derogatory things. I never retaliated once. And normally, if this was first season, I would have. But because I'm trying to change the narrative, I can't, I have to show up as I really want to just move forward and not be in this raggedy place with y'all anymore, you know? Um, so that's what I mean. I'm holding back. Yes, I like scripted much more than... Then I think unscripted. Um, I have auditioned for a lot of roles and um, I have, you know, taken my craft seriously with becoming a better actor, actress. <laughs> um, it depends on what type of reality TV. Um... Oh, it did damage y'all. Are y'all kidding me? People out here thinking you out here trying to ruin people's marriages? Are you serious? I'm a women's empowerment speaker. Um, Q Ing's on here. Angela's on here. She's probably the person that's known me the longest. I've I've done master classes for, for thousands of women. Thousands. And I'm not exaggerating. How do you think that looked? With me, who's been a women's empowerment speaker on here being accused for trying to dig up information and attack people marriages. You think that's good for my image? That's crazy. I didn't dig up information on anyone. It's just stuff that I knew. And I really wouldn't have said anything if they hadn't came from me first. But all of their stuff was cut out. So y'all just think it's me talking and I'm just pulling it out of my behind. And that's not true um philly girl wow you have an amazing observation that's an amazing observation um that reunion i yes ptsd is a great way to explain it i was trying to gather my nerves uh because i just i didn't know what to expect and it took me back to season one um 
That's a great observation. Wow. Thank you, Lady D. Thank you. Yes, protect us better. Protect us better. Put some boundaries and, and some perimeters in place. I don't mind men being on reality TV shows. I do prefer an all, all female cast, but if we're going to have men and allow them the space, put some perimeters in place, put some boundaries in place, put some protections in place. Let the men know and let the women know, y'all, listen, we're here to do a reality show, but y'all are not here to beat up on each other. Y'all are not here to destroy each other. Y'all are not here to attack each other and abuse each other. That's what I would say. It ain't that dang hard. You can write it in our contract that we do not tolerate verbal abuse, emotional abuse, or mental abuse of any kind. We do not tolerate bullying or ganging up on. And if you do so or engage in such things, your contract will be terminated. Sometimes the money takes time to build. Maybe there should be an industry standard, an industry low with the, with the, with the intent of building up on that as the ratings increase. But you can absolutely write things in our contract that protect us from being exposed to what happened to me season one reunion. Y'all, that shouldn't have happened. And I'm gonna tell you, not one woman stopped it. There was one instance where I saw somebody put her hand on her husband's leg and it, it wasn't, it was Ashley actually. And she, she was like, no, 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 I got it. But then it later escalated as the reunion continued. If she had to stay there and just did it, we wouldn't have got to that place. But how can you sit there and as a woman allow for that to happen to another woman? I don't care what she, you thought she deserved, right? Am I wrong? Like I just couldn't, I couldn't imagine just sitting there watching some woman happen to endure that. And let me tell you, even with the scene with Joy, Joy didn't have to sit there and endure everyone coming for her. She was allowed to get up and leave. The men were not coming for Joy like those men came for me. Arena would have never allowed it anyway. I'm going to be honest. She would have she would have stood up for joy. I know she would have. So just kind of, you know, where we gotta make some changes, y'all. We gotta make some changes. I appreciate that, Philly girl. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Adrian. WS, then you obviously didn't watch season one reunion. Thank you, Yvette. I appreciate that. I just feel like if you if you feel like men should be a part of the the equation and I'm not saying that's a wrong thing y'all please hear me I'm not saying that that's a wrong thing but put some perimeters in place there should be boundaries I've never gotten in my castmates face I've never got in their face I've never yelled in their face I've never cussed them out or and and honest um 
to be honest, no, that, that, no, that, that was a nasty reunion and there's witnesses to it. That's why they switched it. Um, to be honest, I'll tell y'all this. I don't like some things that my boyfriend from this season, um, I didn't like some things he did. And I, I excused myself from the stage and I was cussing mad by the end, but I didn't get in his face and cuss him out. I want to show something to you guys. Actually, I can't, I'm not going to show cause I don't want my, I don't want my, I don't want my, um, channel striked by the content cause they could do that. And I don't want my, my video taken down. But um, WS, one of my castmates, did an interview on the Jasmine brand about it. So you can play silly if you want to. I don't have time for that. It is documented, and he did an interview about cussing me out at that reunion. So go look up the Jasmine brand. Type in. You can actually try typing in all of my male castmates' name. One of them is going to come out. And it's going to say, cuss is out, castmate Winter Williams. How do you how do you cuss out a woman and then go brag about it in a, t in a TV interview? So go look it up. It's documented. <laughs> Documentation for that. No, it should not be tolerated. These are the things that are done. And then we want to go brag about it. But we shouldn't brag about cussing anybody out. I'm not proud of, um, I'm not proud of the little cussing I did at the reunion, but he, he, he caught, he, uh, said something to me, basically calling me a witch. Um, and that made me mad. <laughs> um, but we were, he was leaving. I was leaving. We weren't in each other's faces. I wouldn't, first of all, he's six, seven. I would never try to fight no man. No way. I ain't fighting nobody. I can't fight. But, um, yeah, it was bragged about. It should never be tolerated. It should never be tolerated. All right, guys, I got through all the questions. Thank you for joining me. To everyone that tuned in, I appreciate it. Thanks for supporting me through this journey um i'll be live again we'll be going live i'm gonna start doing winter wisdom wednesdays and i just want to get as far removed from this um as possible i do want to raise awareness about um workplace toxicity um especially as in relation to reality tv because there definitely needs to be some changes but i do want to get back to my core of just creating a safe place and a safe space for women um, to own and connect and and stand on their truth, y'all. People don't have to agree, agree with your truth, but you can absolutely own it and you don't have to be scared to share it. Um, I definitely would encourage you guys to follow my YouTube page. I'm going to continue to document. I have a very important announcement that I'll be dropping on my YouTube page and I'm thinking I may do it for my channel members. I might do an exclusive for my channel members. Um, a lot of you have been curious about what's going on in my life, my personal life. And I do want to update you guys. But I don't post a lot on social media anymore because I feel like a part of my responsibility is, is to protect what's precious and sacred to me. But I do want to open up a little bit more. Um, and I'm going to be doing that here on YouTube. So... If you are an IC insider or want to become an IC insider, I will be um, dropping some exclusive tea for you guys. Um, and then uh, I will be having some some great, you know, chats with the community over here. But we're just going to grow and um, see what's next. And there is a lot of things that I'm working on. But um, I'm just excited about building this this community um, that I want to be supportive and an opportunity for other people to learn, grow, evolve, and 
just embrace their future. Like we are so powerful. And I think sometimes we forget that because of the things we've been through. But I love you guys. Have an amazing night and I'll see you soon. Bye.